geometry. Simple geometry, grade 11, there are nine theorems. At the moment, you know two. The second theorem that we were taught was this one that says the angle at the center of the circle is that is why your x would be 48. And don't get confused and make it half of 24 and make it 12. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. The way I taught you was that when you see it, it's either going to be nice and symmetrical like that one. It's just a little bit skewed. Or you can find it that it's pressed a little bit to the side, it's still going to be twice this one as well as that one. And it can also be that when you extend one of these lines just straight, <coughs> that will still be A into A. And then the last one is one like this, where you'll have like a dented in or squished in situation. You're still going to have twice what you have over. There. It's still the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, subtended by the same arc. That arc subtends the angle at the center and it subtends the angle at the circumference. So when you're looking at a sum like this, this one is level minus one, that, that x is then 24, but you only get one out of two marks because you don't give a reason. Angle at the center of the circle is two times the angle at the circle. Right. For this one, it's the same situation. It's just a little bit swapped around. It's this one, but just a little bit turned around if you want to turn your head around. So 36 is the angle at the center that is subtended by AB. A, B still subtends an angle at the circumference. Do you see it? You go from A, B to the center. You go from A, B to the circumference. You go from A, B to the center, which is 36. You go from A, B to the circumference. Meaning this will then be 18. Don't get the one confused with the other one. Don't make it 72. It's the angle at the center that is twice the angle at the circumference. So X is 18 again for that same reason. Angle at the center of the circle, and don't get lazy. The more you write it, the less mistakes you'll make. Because if the reason isn't correct and the abbreviation isn't correct, you don't get them all. Angle at the center is twice. If you want to write twice, the angle at the circumference. And that's your finish. Two marks. Two marks. Will this be a question in the exam? No. It's too easy. We're just getting there. Okay, this one's a little bit more to the liking of something happening there. I also want not only X, but I also want Y. So it's a double situation. With the 95, you can immediately find X. X. What's it, 95? Okay, so 95 is the angle at the center, which is subtended by what? BD. Going to the center, going to the circumference. So that should be half. Am I allowed to write 95 over 2? Yes. And if you want to write 47,5 or half, doesn't matter. So your x would then be, whatever way you want to write it, for the same reason. Angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. And then what about y? You see why? Is this a situation? If you're looking for it, you'll see it. If you're not looking for it, you might not see it. But that angle over there will be double the Y. How do you get angle over 2? 360 minus. 360 minus because it's a revolution. How much is that? How much? I'm not sure, just check up on my, on my calculation. 365. 360 take away 95? 365. Okay, because it's a revolution. 
which I can um, abbreviate like that. Then we'll say, but y is then half of that 265, which again you can write as a number. And your reason, angle at the center, is two times the angle at the center, circumference. Now, the, the level of sum is not that difficult, this one particularly. It's a little bit more than what we had in the first two, but it's not that high a level. So usually what we do is we'll give you one mark for both of those, for knowing the answer and for the reason, one mark. For knowing the answer and the reason, one mark. Answer and the reason, one mark. So a child that only gave me these three answers actually knows what he's doing and he's getting? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Often, especially if it's a, not such a difficult level, they only give you one mark for stating the statement, giving you the answer, and telling me what the reason is. One mark. So if you don't have reasons, you can get zero, although I can see you know exactly what you're doing, but you're giving me no reasons, so zero marks. Right. Let's get to theorem three and four. Okay, theorem number three. So when you are sitting there in the June exam, knowing all nine theorems, you're going to go through all nine of them. You're going to look at a sketch and you're going to say, what's man asking me here? Is the center, line from the center of the circle to perpendicular to the board here? Yeah. No. Is the second one here, is it angle at the center twice the angle at the circumference? No. Okay, you're saying no now, but I'm going to show you actually yes. Theorem number three is the new one I want to show you. And some people are saying we don't have to call it another theorem on its own because it actually is theorem two. If this is the angle at the center, how long is it? 180 because it's a line. Then what will this angle be? 90. The theorem originally just said, if I have an angle at the circumference of a circle, which is subtended by a diameter, what does that mean? Angle at the circumference, subtended by, this then must be a diameter going through the center of the circle, that makes it a diameter. If that happens, this will always be 90. Now it actually comes from theorem number two. Now Euclidean geometry, that's what we're busy with, builds on top of each other. Theorem one and two and three help you for four and five and etc. So you're always building on top of each other. So theorem two actually helps you with theorem three. It is actually the angle at the center, which is 180, is twice the angle at the circumference, which is then 90. 90. But we're not going to say that. We are going to say, that it's an angle in the semicircle. Semicircle, what does semi mean? Half. half. Right? So I'm saying if you've got half a circle, what makes it half a circle? The diameter. If you ever have a diameter, so when I see a sum and there's a diameter, I can start looking for this theorem. Is there a diameter in here? Yes. Even if it maybe looks to, to you like there's one, if I don't say there's the center, you can't assume this is a diameter. Well, that is a diameter. You never assume anything. You have to know. You've got to be told that it is. So the moment you have a diameter, you've got a semicircle. So you don't have to say that the angle of the circumference is subtended by the diameter is 90 degrees. You just have to say the reason why it's 90 is angle in a semicircle. Nice, easy, short. Let's do an example. This is the test for a grade. A child, if you knew this, how would I find angle B? Uh, so one, 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 two, 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 Minus, it's 180 minus 90 minus 20 in the answer. So you're going to get one out of four marks. You've got to tell me why it's 90. Then you've got to tell me, therefore, angle B will be equal to 70, which we used to now in the trig, right? Yes. The moment that I had a right angle triangle, those two should add up to 90, so this one should be 70. My reason? Interior angles. Interior angles are the angles of a triangle. 
however which way, there's a few abbreviations for that. Could be with four marks, much too easy for a grade 11. I'll give you two marks. Answer and the reason. Answer and the reason. So you have to have a reason for everything you write or you don't get the marks. That's theorem three. Easy? Yes. So what are you looking for in a sum? If you're looking for theorem three, there has to be a done. That is it. Okay. We're also going to be doing converses. Sometimes I'm going to give you a circle or somewhere, somewhere there's going to be a 90 degree. I didn't tell you that this was a diameter, did I? No. I've got to tell you either we're showing or whatever. But if I give you 90, what are you going to deduct? This has to be a diameter. So the converses also work. If I give you 90, you know it's a diameter. If I give you a diameter, you know that it's 90. We'll be getting into a lot of that once we have all the theory. We're trying to get through all the theory first. Theorem number four. Looks like a little bow tie going out for your magic dance. Okay, do you see the, the bow tie there? Okay. It says that angles at the circumference of a circle, which are subtended by the same chord, or arc, if that's implicated, whether it's on the same chord or arc, will be equal. Let me tell you what it's all about. So angle A is an angle at the circumference, right? Yes. What is the, what subtends angle A? DC. DC, do you see it? Angle A is subtended DC. by, there goes the ten cents, DC. But that same DC, Arc also subtends B. 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 That's why A and B will be equal to each other. So the little bow tie, you see those little dots there. So that is why angle A will be equal to angle B. And what do you think? And D and C. Because instead of looking at it like this, you just turn your head around like this, you can see still that it's happening. That D is subtended by? A, B. Are you going to do this all the time? D is subtended by A, B. A, B also subtends. So then D and C are also equal. Now, the, re the reason for this or the abbreviation is much shorter and it looks completely different. The reason says they are angles in the same circle segment. What is a segment? <clears throat> when I cut a chord like that. Then I've got a smaller segment and a larger segment. So if I have angles in the same segment, then they have to have the same chord going wherever to that side. It's crushed into the corner, it doesn't matter. It's in the same circle segment. Or it could have been on this side as well. So then that would be equal to each other as well. So your abbreviation is they are angles in the same circle segment. Reasons must be correct. Abbreviations are helpful and useful and wonderful, but you've got to do them right. Last variation is if I take this exact same thing here. Let me take this one. And I, like you did in grade 8, cut them out and paste them. Then I can cut out a triangle there and I can cut out a triangle over there. You see what I'm doing over here? Yes. If I cut them out and paste them back together, then AC and DC should be sitting right on top of each other making a bow tie. Do you see it? Use your, use your imagination here. So let me just cut out the one, pick it up, and put it over there. Do you see it happening that you're still going to get to a bow tie? Whether there's a chord or whether there's an arc, it doesn't matter. Those are going to be angles in the same circle segment. The bow tie is working. For this one, they are separate. But what will give it away? I have to tell you that those pieces of chords are equal. Or in some way, you're going to prove that they are. So the moment that there's pieces that are equal, you can have this bow tie situation, but it's a part. Which you can put back to. You're not going to cut and paste and do that. But you're going to deduct from here. If I do have those pieces that are equal, I'll deduct that the angles what are equal. Because the subtension is not the same chord, but it's 
equal chords. And if they are equal chords, they make the same equal size of segment. It's not the same segment, but it's the same size. If that one is cut, then there's a big segment. If this um, chord is um, drawn here, the same size of segment would be there. So basically, you can picture in your mind, you're cutting out one of them and putting it onto the other one, you'll have that bow tie thingy going there. But it's B that's subtended by the AC, and F that's subtended by the DE, which if you did go put them together, you can see the bow tie. But our reason will then be, not angles in the same circle segment, but angles in? Equals. What makes them equal? Because those equal chords make equal size segments that are left. You see that you've got this whole toolbox full of information that you've got to get up to speed with, and then we're going to start practicing them. So for now, you know four theorems. Line from the center of the circle, perpendicular will bisect. If it bisects, perpendicular. The second one is not on the board anymore. It's if it's the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, and it has three variations. Whether it gets squished to the side, on top of each other, or kind of like popped in. And if you don't know that, and look for it in a sketch with 400 lines, you're not going to see it. These are nice and easy still. Number three is the angle in a semi-circle. So you're searching for a diameter. The fourth one is the bow tie. Do you ever write bow tie? Never ever. But if you see a bow tie, you know that it's angle and the circumference subtended by the same chord. You just write angles in the same circle segment. Last variation on that is if you split them apart like that, tear them apart like that. It's the same thing if you would go and put them on top of each other, but your reason would be angles in equal circle. No homework. Next time we're carrying on because I want to get through all the theory and then we can start doing all the stuff. Mm -hmm.